Hello, welcome to St. Mary's Amport. I'm Matthew. It's very good to be with you. And thank you for joining us. Let's use once more the uh, verticals and responses we've been using through Lent. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. O my God, in you I trust. Now this Sunday is sometimes called Passion Sunday, the Sunday before Palm Sunday, when we begin to focus in on our Lord's passionate love of us. Here's a prayer of the day. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now it's a joy to welcome Tim to come and read for us, and Ian is once more going to preach, and Laurie will lead our intercessions. So, Tim. A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 12. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls onto the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world, will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, Glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of the Lord. I wonder if you've noticed how many TV programs recently have developed the art of a dramatic climax. One of my favorites is Death in Paradise, partly because it's rather silly and very low key. And in the last episode, they tamed tantalizingly close to a dramatic climax and then it ended and we've now got to wait for the next series and a number of other programs seems to have developed the same art but here in John chapter 12 we have the climax to the greatest story of all time Jesus has been increasing the stakes with the religious leaders just recently he raised Lazarus from the dead and then in the amazing entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday excitement reached a new pitch what was this miracle worker, this provocative and subversive teacher, going to do next? And in these verses, Jesus gives us the last words in public. 
and he provides us with the essence of his ministry and leaves us, at least he leaves me, deeply challenged. And at this critical juncture, some Greeks appear, and they come to Philip, who's one of the disciples, and they say to him, and this is a question that's hung down the ages, we want to see Jesus. He was a person of the hour, the man of the moment. And the question then for us is, do we want to see Jesus? And if so, watch Jesus. Because down the centuries, the tendency has been for so many people to create a Jesus who fits our hopes and values. But yet, this image is so often not coincide with the Jesus of the Gospels, and sometimes can even be polar opposite. So let's start with the Greeks. So what were they looking for? Well, they loved signs and wonders and miracles, and perhaps they were looking for a five-star magician. We don't know for certain. And then there were the Jews. They had been longing for a Messiah for centuries. But their Messiah, unfortunately, was going to be a nationalist leader who would overthrow the Romans and bring in a new golden age. Now, we look at these two images from the benefit of reading the Gospels and see how wrong they were. But I wonder if in our age we can get it equally wrong and create a construct of Jesus far removed from the carpenter's son from Nazareth. Just a few weeks ago, I don't know about you, but I was mesmerized on January the 6th watching those extraordinary scenes on Capitol Hill in Washington, the violence, the hatred. And in the middle were some banners saying, Jesus saves. Maybe they were well-meaning. But what damage, as millions around the world watched as they saw these images of white nationalists and Nazis? Surely the Jesus of the Gospels is a long way from that. Of course, it's easier to disdain the Christian leaders from the Deep South and the tolerance of racism and extreme political positions. But I wonder if in our own culture, we and heritage, we have created a Jesus which has too often been far from the true picture. The most insidious temptation, it seems to me, is for Christian leaders to water down the message of Jesus, to make it more acceptable to the culture of the day. There was an article in one of the Sunday papers a year or two ago describing the Church of England in particular the churches in the inner city, where they provide gently and quietly meeting the needs of the people. And this Jesus is a sort of benevolent figure, providing comfort to the most vulnerable. And of course, it's an image of Jesus that has much truth. We know he was full of compassion. He cared deeply for the poor, and he always looked down out to heal the sick whenever he could. But Whilst it's a strongly attractive image, and one I am very warm to, we have to face the fact it's only a partial image. Because if we come back to this passage, we see a Jesus here who's controversial, he's challenging, he's always upsetting the status quo, and he's antagonistic towards the powers that be. He's not even particularly polite. Think of that dinner party which Simon gave him when he upbraids him for the greeting which he received. And he calls the Sadducees whited sepulchres. We would consider that quite abrasive. And then there's the accumulation of the extraordinary claims he'd be making about himself. We see this in the previous chapters. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. And most aggravatingly of all, or most shocking, I and the Father are one. No wonder the religious leaders were outraged. So this leaves us a certain type of Christianity in a bit of a pickle. Because we simply can't put Jesus in a convenient box and bring him out at Christmas and Easter and special occasions, the mayor, the, the, the coronation perhaps. He's not someone we can just call a good man and praise him with faint praise. No, the Gospels won't let us do that. And C.S. Lewis, as so often, gets it very clearly. Jesus was either mad, he was bad, or he was God. And if he was God, we have some very deep truths to face up to. Because in this passage, we see Jesus overturning so many expectations. Put it one way, Jesus invites us not to his coronation, but to his crucifixion. Now is my heart troubled. He's about to face the most gruesome and horrendous death imaginable, and he's done it for you and me, for us. And he then tells us, if we would love our life, we will lose it. But whoever hates his life in this world 
will keep it for eternal life. This is not the Jesus of the prosperity gospel. Come to Jesus and you can have everything the world can offer. No, this Jesus calls us to follow him through thick and thin. And in first few centuries in Palestine and Rome, this could mean persecution, it could often mean death, as it does in many parts of the world still today. Here in Hampshire, this is unlikely to happen to us. But personally, I find this Jesus, the one we meet in John's Gospel, deeply challenging, in many ways uncomfortable. But as millions have found down the ages, at the end of the day, this Jesus, who I so often let down and who I only dimly understand, in his love, calls me back to him again and again. And I know I have nowhere else to go. Dear Lord, with our whole hearts, we bow down in wonder and love to you. Please join me in responding to the prayers with, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today for victims of violence and their families across the UK, strengthening our government leaders to offer protection and justice across our lands and providing assurance that in walking with the Lord, you will be safe. In your name we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those affected by COVID, locally, nationally, and globally. For our healthcare workers in their resilience and continuing to protect us. For countless volunteers across our community, especially those working in the vaccination centers. And for our teachers, parents, and students as they readjust to the new schedules. We know you alone are the greatest healer of all. In your name we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for the beautiful countryside that surrounds us. For those still homebound, we ask that you stream the sunshine and the Holy Spirit directly to them. And for those walking around our villages with their families, friends, horses, and dogs, we pray that they will declare your favor on the ground that they walk on and actively worship you. In your name we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, please strengthen each of us in our own battles today. And give us peace in the midst of the storms of life. In your name we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. So we thank Tim and Laurie and Ian. Let me ask the Lord's blessing on us as we journey towards Palm Sunday. Jesus, give you grace to grow in holiness to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those who walk with you day by day. Amen. We live in the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Lord, Lord, you've searched me. So